Cold Environments with a case study of Svalbard. Cold environments experience temperatures of 0 degrees Celsius or below for long periods of time. For polar regions, this is all year round. Temperatures can fall up to minus 50 degrees Celsius and there are strong winds despite the low snowfall. The permafrost is deep and covered by a sheet of ice. Moss and lichen grow on the edge of the ice, but are scarce. The animals there, such as polar bears and penguins, are well adapted. Tundra is less extreme. There is surface permafrost, but this melts during the short summers. There is higher snowfall by coastal regions. Plants are low growing and flowering. Birds migrate to the area and so are here in the summer alongside insects. All year round, however, animals such as the arctic fox and hare live in the tundra. Even less extreme are alpine areas of high mountains, which simply experience very cold winters. Svalbard is close to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and is the northernmost inhabited area. 60% is covered in glaciers and the rest is tundra. Its population is 2,700, most of whom live in Longyearbyen and Spitsbergen, the largest of Svalbard's five islands. A coal power station in Longyearbyen provides electricity for the entire island, but this is controversial. Coal produces carbon dioxide. Geothermal is a likely source of power for Svalbard in the future. The Barents Sea is a rich fishing ground, providing haddock, cod and herring. Fishing is heavily controlled to protect the supplies. Tourism now provides as many jobs as mining. Visitors come for the beauty of Svalbard and the Northern Lights are a huge attraction. Many are drawn to the activities, which include hiking, kayaking and snowmobile safaris. In Longyearbyen, temperatures can fall to minus 30 degrees Celsius, which means tourists and residents alike have to wear thick layers of clothing. This can make outside work much slower. Construction can only happen during the summer and permafrost needs to be protected so that buildings do not collapse. Dirt and gravel roads are raised and so are power, water and sanitation pipes. These are heated and insulated to prevent the thawing of permafrost and for easy maintenance. Svalbard can only be reached by air or sea. Flights link Spitsbergen to mainland Norway and Russia, while smaller aircraft provide access to the other islands. There are no roads outside of Longyearbyen and as a result most use snowmobiles. There are more of these than there are residents, largely due to tourism. Svalbard has coal reserves, which are good for their economy. However, coal and oil reserves require roads to be built through natural environments, housing for workers, equipment and pipelines. This can pollute the natural environment and kill wildlife. However, there are some places where this has been managed sustainably. The Trans-Alaskan Pipeline crosses two mountain ranges and 200 rivers. It's raised and insulated to allow caribou migration and prevent the thawing of permafrost. It is designed to slide during earthquakes to prevent damage and has automatic shutoff features if a leak occurs. In Alaska, the US government also manages large areas of wilderness and ensures the protection of wildlife. The Antarctic Treaty goes further, preventing economic development and controlling tourism. It also promotes scientific research. To ensure a sustainable future for Antarctica, the World Wide Fund for Nature works with oil companies, indigenous people, government officials and locals. To further study and test yourself, check out the links in the description box below.